50 years ago, never would have thought it was possible. The only way to view a brain was under a microscope after it had been removed from whoever or whatever. But now IT technology has, has pushed us to a point of understanding that we never thought, I think, we, we would ever get to. What's happened with the advent of imaging is that we're able to view the brain in action as it's actually carrying out processes. One of my areas of research is um, Prader-Willi syndrome. Probably what it's best known for is um, the overconsumption of food and the consequential obesity that comes with that. Society's stigmatised view of obesity generally means that people take the opinion that, that it's, a, it's a consequence of, of moral frailty. Somebody is obese because they eat too much. But what we're discovering now with the advent of imaging is that there may be a reason why those people eat too much. If we take a, 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 um, a regular individual and put them into the fMRI machine, and such an individual has just consumed um, a large meal and has reached that point of feeling full and sitting back, you'll find that although there is a neurological response to an image of a certain piece of food, it is by no means as great as it was when they were, um, when they were hungry. With Prader-Willi syndrome patients, that doesn't occur. They're going to be as equally responsive neurologically to an image of food when they're hungry as when they've just consumed a meal. It doesn't matter what they've just eaten or when they've just eaten, they're always going to be stimulated by food. When I eat a meal, I feel full first of all, but then in two hours' time I feel as I haven't ate something. It feels frustrating being hungry all the time. If you put on too much weight, we can die. The fMRI data really helps us pinpoint where the problem is. So now we have a target area and a target problem. The fullness signals aren't strong enough. We're hoping to overcome this with an implant that could artificially stimulate activity in that area. If we could do that and we could release people from the need to have to think about food all the time and really help them lead more independent lives. I think it's important to, to make people aware of the fact that as technology advances, it's not just helping us keep in contact or get from point A to point B quicker than we could do before. It's actually helping us understand what it is that defines us as free-thinking, conscious individuals.